Good morning. It's December the 5th, 2012. This is the latest in our series of oral histories of, of uh, people from German Village. And what a special treat we have today in that we're going to be visiting with Robin Freeman, who uh, is a longtime resident of German Village, but that may not be the thing he's uh, most known for. He has a, a pretty well-known basketball player in his day, and you're going to hear more about that. Uh, as well as uh, a great professional career in the law. Robin, welcome. Well, thank you. Nice to have you here. Um, first of all, uh, let me just start with, uh, you've had an incredible career in basketball back in the day, but people may not uh, know, uh, I don't think a lot of people even know that you live here in German Village. And well, tell first me, of all, they wouldn't remember me. It's so long ago. <laughs> but uh, what prompted you to come to German Village? How, how did you get to know this area? Well, uh, uh, I was living in Springfield, and uh, when German Village uh, be, became sort of well-known, uh, we came over a lot uh, uh, for uh, eating out, and uh, some people had, one had a wedding reception at the German Village uh, Society building. And so it, it was uh, in, in my consciousness, uh, uh, and I always liked it. Uh, it it's neat. And I had dated a girl in uh, uh, college uh, who... Here in Ohio State. Yeah, whose uh, grandparents lived in Ger what was now would be German Village. and. Uh, we used to come down here every once in a while and go to Isley's and have some ice cream cone or something like that. But I always loved it. And uh, my uh, wife... Uh, and that's Bonnie Drummond, she's Bonnie, who, who is a great volunteer for the society. Right. And she uh, uh, thought our dogs needed a backyard. At, and uh, we didn't have one in Dayton where we were living. And, she suggested we could go to a restored area in Dayton called the Oregon District. And I said, I would much rather be in German Village, which is a knockout restored area. And so we, we came. And you've lived here for how long? Oh, uh, 21 or 22 years. Since 19... 22. 22. And... During a lot of that time, you commuted to Springfield, where you practiced law. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you must like German Village if you commuted 45 minutes each way. Oh, we, we <laughs> do, and uh, it's a wonderful place to live. The, 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 there's a comradie among uh, the, the people here uh, that uh, makes it like a, a real village. <laughs> well, I always considered, if you, if you kind of didn't think of the... Uh, anything past Livingston Avenue on one side and Parsons on the other and High Street on the other and it was just country, it would really kind of be a small town, wouldn't it? Yeah, that, that's true. We lived in Yellow Springs for five years and uh, that was truly a small uh, uh, town. And this is very comparable. You, um, let me ask you a question. There have been a lot of great basketball players at Ohio State. Jerry Lucas... Clark Kellogg, Michael Redd, who has the record for the single season scoring average and career scoring average at the Ohio State University? Well, no one would know it, but I do. And, uh, and it's, it, it was at a time when uh, uh, defense wasn't as uh, pronounced as it is now. So it was a time when scoring was uh, Big time. And what, just so the folks have some understanding of what your numbers were, what it, was your uh, approximate scoring average for both a season and a career? I think it was, for a, uh, a career, I think it was 28 points a game. And uh, for a season, I think it was uh, maybe 33 or 22.9 or something like that. But to do that, I shot a lot. But you hit a high percentage. 46. Which in that era particularly, as you, you and I said off camera, 
if you hit a third of your shots, particularly if you were an outside shooter back then, uh, that wasn't that bad. Well, I had something that uh, uh, was new at the time. Of course, it isn't now, and that was a jump shot. I was the first jump shot around the, the, these parts, and uh, so uh, uh, I don't think uh, the defense wasn't up to uh, catching up with a jump shot like they do now. You are, what, about five foot eleven? Yes. And that you were able to prosper and, and have a great career at, at what is not, it, it's an average sized man, but it's not a tall basketball player. <laughs> My mom, when I, uh, I had, uh, I played football in uh, high school, uh, a freshman. I slipped and had a concussion and couldn't play football any longer. And uh, I wanted to play some sport at high school, and so I never liked basketball. So I told my mom I wanted to play basketball. She took me to our pediatrician, my pediatrician, and he fluoroscoped my wrist and said he's gonna be as big as his dad. My dad was about six feet. My mom thought that was great. She gave me a go ahead to play basketball and uh, she didn't realize six feet was nowhere. <laughs> in she thought that was tall. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You grew up in Cincinnati and uh, attended Hughes High School. And you told me a little bit about what, it was kind of a diverse area. Oh yeah, our high school had 3,300 kids. It was the third biggest in the state, state of Ohio. And we had a, a one-third Afro-American, and uh, there was a, a, an area of Cincinnati where most of the population were Jewish, and that our high school took that in. So we had uh, a third Afro-American, a third who were Jewish, and a third uh, mixture. So it was really a diverse background. Good education. Yes, it was. And you... Uh made the basketball team, and I think you told me that your junior year you were a good player, but uh, you averaged like 17 points a game, nothing like what you were about to do. Yeah, the, and well, I developed my jump shot uh, between my junior and senior year dur during the summer, and uh, uh, my coach in high school at the start of my senior year didn't want me to shoot the jump shot. He thought it was, you were off balance, and I, he, he just didn't like it. And in the first game we played, I, shot, I jumped and shot and made it, did it again a couple times, and from then on, I, he let me shoot it. Well, didn't you even have to uh, do a little study for the coach to show that statistically you were a better shooter as a jump shooter? Oh, yeah. Well, I kept statistics in my practice. And when I practiced, and uh, uh, I shot a higher percentage jump shot than, than any other shot. So uh, I tried to back it up. He wouldn't listen for a while. <laughs> Until the results started uh, right. showing you right. And then your senior year, your scoring average skyrocketed. Yeah, I had 39.5 or, or something uh, uh, like that. Uh, and, uh, all because of the jump shot. And... As far as the way you scored, you were primarily shooting from the outside? Yeah, perimeter type of shot. Uh, uh, and this is pre-three-point shot that you were running up those kind of numbers. Yeah, uh, yeah, I would have taken a lot of three-point shots in today's basketball. So here you are, you've averaged 39 points a game your senior year. I have to believe there were a lot of college coaches uh, at your door uh, look and recruit you. Uh, we got letters from and calls from I think it was around 80 schools at, at the time and uh, uh, but I decided on Ohio State. I, uh, Ohio State in the Big Ten. Big Ten was sort of a, a, a physical conference where uh, the, uh, they were rougher in most places. And if you were going to go on and play pro basketball, it was a good tr 
training uh, ground. So that was one of the factors. And I, I liked uh, uh, Ohio State anyway. And, but you, I think you did say you were recruited by the famous Adolph Rupp of Kentucky, and you met him, but you didn't like him very much. Well, they had just come out of the scandals of throwing basketball. With Alex and, Groza and all yeah. that. Yeah. So, uh, who was an Ohio boy. Uh, so, he wasn't very appealing to, to me. So, uh, on you come to the Buckeyes. And this is... Uh, uh, we talked a little bit about St. John Arena. That was one of the incentives they used to recruit you? Yeah, they, they had a model of St. John's Arena, and uh, they used that to sell to the to the re recruits. The only trouble was that they didn't get it built until I <laughs> had gone. You played at the fairgrounds. That's right. Which is still used for boys' high school games occasionally, but uh, probably not too many people around today saw college games there. Probably not. Uh, uh, 56 would have been the, the last year. Floyd Stahl was your coach? Yes. And how was he to play for? Oh, uh, a wonderful gentleman. Uh, he coached at Harvard for seven years or so before he came to Ohio State. And uh, uh, he was only five foot four. So he was sort of a midget uh, among these tall guys. But uh, he was... Uh, uh, you couldn't find a finer uh, gentleman than he was. Your first year, uh, I understand at that point in time, freshmen couldn't play varsity sports. That's right. Uh, they, and it was really a downer year for it. You're used to playing and just, uh, I didn't like that at all. Would you scrimmage with the varsity or how did that work? Yeah. In fact, my freshman team uh, played an exhibition game against the varsity and we beat them. That's, that's impressive. I heard uh, similar stories like when UCLA had Lou Elsinder and all that, that they wiped the varsity up. <laughs> I could believe. So, uh, you're, finally your sophomore year, you get a chance to play. Right. And I think you said you, you had a good year. You averaged 22 points a game, even though you weren't the primary scoring option. Yeah, we had a player named Paul Ebert who was... Uh, uh, the centerpiece of our basketball team. And he's from the South End here, went to South High School, and became a world-class surgeon. Operated on little kids' hearts that were defective. And then uh, uh, your junior year, you kind of come into your own. Yeah, then uh, average 32 or 33 uh, from then on. And, in, uh, in college. And I understand one of your teammates uh, in the 54-55 season was the great Frank Howard. Yeah, he, he, yeah, Frank, Frank uh, grew up on Jackson Street. Right here. And right here in uh, uh, German Village. He came from a, a big family and uh, so and you said he was not very well off as a child. They, 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 they had... were very poor. Uh, uh, and, and one of the first things Frank did when he got signed a baseball contract was to buy his parents a home. So even though he was a great basketball player, he, he, he made his bigger name, I guess, as a, baseball. in baseball. He, he was a great slugger. Right, right. For the Dodgers and Senators, as I recall. Yeah. I saw him play. Yeah. And managed in the major leagues. Twice, yeah. Right. Um, so you two were kind of the stars of the uh, your junior and senior year. Well, he only played with me when I was a senior. Okay. He was a sophomore then. So we only played together one year. And he was a marvelous rebounder. Uh, he's strong as an ox. And you made, uh, you only uh, played 13 games your junior year, and yet you made All-America honors, so that's quite an achievement. Well, uh, I, you know, what can you say? Uh, you had they, an injury. They that, vote for all that stuff. You had an injury that cut short your season. Yeah. I think you said it was, uh, you had you injured your ankle and you tried to play on it and shouldn't have? Well, uh, I don't think I handled it all very well. I didn't like to not be 
that's at the top of your game. Your game. So, in any event, I miss part of the season. Your senior year, you played the whole season. Oh yeah. And this was a great year. Well, I had it was my best year in, in, in college, uh, for sure. And this is where you set this single season scoring record of almost 33 a game, which still stands. Here in Ohio State. Yes. Uh, and I, you had some, you made all America on all the wire services uh, that year. Yeah. Right? And, and you had some pretty good company on those All-America teams. Bill Russell. Yeah. One of the greatest. Oh, time. yeah. And you said Tommy Heinsohn also. Yeah, Tommy. Uh, uh, I got to know Tommy pretty well. Uh, he, he uh, well, he, he was one of a kind. <laughs> well, you told me about, the, and he's, uh, for those that don't know, he was one of the played with Bill Russell on the Celtics, and I think he's in the Hall of Fame basketball. Oh, Tell me about the story uh, in a bar with Tommy. Well, he, he, the guy's like, he's six foot seven, and uh, uh, he, he just had sort of like a commanding presence. And uh, he takes me around, we're playing in an all-star game in New York City, and he's from Jersey, and he sounded like he's from Jersey. And, uh, and he, he takes me out one night and we go to a bar. And he, go, he goes in the bar and it's like he's staring at everybody. Like he want, he's mad at him. And uh, yeah, I was happy to get out of there. But no one would choose him, he's so big. But he was ready to fight if anybody he, would have any. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you got a chance to play with Russell in an all-star game too, right? Yes. Uh, and uh, unless you've saw him when he was at his prime of jumping. It was almost unbelievable. Uh, I thought that he could jump and the basket would be hit him around in his chest to, to his waist. It looked like he was that high in the air. What did you say about his being able to take a silver dollar off the top of the backboard or something like that? Well, that's what uh, Tommy Heinsohn had told me that they'd put a silver dollar on top of the backboard and he would jump and knock it off so that he could get up there. So you have a great senior year. Uh, oh, one other fellow that you told me you encountered is uh, the legendary Bebo Francis. Well, yeah, he was legendary in his coach's mind. Uh, they, uh, Rio Grande, where he went to uh, uh, high school or uh, uh, college, uh, he had not graduated from high school, so uh, he he was wasn't recruited at all because he didn't have a degree. But somehow in Rio Grande, he got in, and he was coached there uh, by a guy named Newt Oliver. And knew it was a great character, and uh, he was the one that promoted uh, 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 Bebo's career. And they ended up, they had a good team, uh, particularly for Rio Grande. Didn't they end up playing in Madison Square Garden? Oh, yeah. In colleges? Yeah. And they, he, Bebo uh, uh, was a very, a very nice shot. And uh, he was good in transition, in fast, like at a fast break, and all. He he could not play facing the basket. That was his his weakness. And that would have hurt him in a pro career. Oh you? yeah, yeah. Another fellow that you uh, encountered, uh, although you your playing careers didn't uh, overlap, I think you had something to do with the recruitment of Jerry Lucas to Ohio State. Did you? Well, they were bringing when I played. They would bring him up to, to see Ohio State games. Even though he was just starting in high school, he still had such a reputation that uh, they were after him, <laughs> hot and heavy. So you helped in that effort? Well, I, I met him and said hello, uh, tried to be nice to him. So here you come out 
you've had this incredible season. You're on the All-American teams with Bill Russell and Tommy Heinsohn. Uh, my understanding is you did get drafted by the NBA, the St. Louis Hawks, but you didn't go pro. What happened? Well, uh, I did have an accident where I, I lost a part of uh, fingers, but that's really not what uh, why I didn't go on and play pro basketball. They were they were paying uh, back then. Uh, they would have paid me seventy five hundred dollars. Bob Cousy, who was the greatest player, the, the most popular player in pro basketball, was making twenty two thousand a year. So the money was nothing like like it is today. Believe me. Uh, but so to me, uh, uh, I I would rather uh, get something I could do the rest of my my life and make a living. And so I decided to go to law school. You said there was something that kind of helped push you in the direction of the law. Uh, an uncle of yours was a, a lawyer you respected. Oh yeah, he. I had an uncle. My family was from Kansas, and uh, he was a, 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 a lawyer in Wichita, Kansas, and he was uh, very well known for gas and oil uh, law, and uh, uh, he was the reason I wanted to become a, a lawyer. And so you went three years to Ohio State Law School? Correct. And I think you said you never, you, you did so without having graduated from uh, undergraduate. Yeah, that's, uh, you, you could do that at the time. If you just had so many credits, uh, you could go, you could get in with three years. And so I, I ended up, uh, being, that was the last year they did that. And you enjoyed law school? <laughs> as much as anybody does. Yeah. <laughs> Worked, uh, I, I've been there with you. I, 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 uh, there are certain aspects that are enjoyable, the scholarly aspect, but it's a grind, of course. Um, then you decide to practice law in Springfield, which I, uh, d you didn't really have any prior, prior con uh, connection with Springfield. No, my, my uncle that I mentioned uh, was a, a lawyer, and the reason I became a lawyer uh, said that if he had to do it over again, he would pick a smaller town, and so that's what I looked for. And Springfield uh, is a very nice town to raise a family and to sort of grow up in. So uh, I practiced in Springfield, but my kind of, uh, I did trial work, and I was more or less like on a circuit between going to Bell Fountain, Urbana, and Xenia, and uh, London, uh, so uh, uh, I got <laughs> around. And insurance defense right. work. I mean, you said that you did a lot of medical malpractice defense. Defense, defense yeah. Helping the doctors out. Uh, and it, it, there was a point in time when you meet Bonnie, Bonnie Drummond. Right. She uh, was a legal secretary, and uh, we met, and then she ended up going to law school, and... Uh, uh, she is now uh, a lawyer, but she's retired like I am. So. She go to Ohio State? No, uh, Dayton. Okay. University of Dayton. We were living in Dayton at the time, uh, uh, so she graduated fr from there, and uh, then uh, I we, I told you the story of why we moved. Uh, yeah, we have your dog to thank for you being here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we, 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 cute little dachshunds and uh, miniatures. And uh, one of them would run around and get lost. And we, Bonnie thought he needed a backyard, or she needed a backyard. So uh, uh, she wanted to move to an area in Dayton. And I said, well, let's go to a really a neat restored area in the German village. So that's how we got here. We're at your home here at 557 uh, South, Grant. South Grant. Is this where you've lived or have you lived in other no, places? No, no. This is, this is it. And uh, you, you told us a little bit why you uh, moved here. Uh, 
And for everybody who may be watching this uh, documentary years from now even, tell us why it's so nice to be living in German Village. Well, first of all, it looks good. And if you like old things and, and things that might endure for a while, I mean, the brick streets and the brick houses and just uh, uh, it's got an ambiance that's uh, unbelievably neat if you like old things. And then there's a camaraderie among the, the people that live here. It's like uh, my wife volunteers and enjoys all kinds of uh, interaction with uh, the, the people that, that live here. And uh, so uh, it's, it's, it's truly like living in a German village. And I say it is like being in the middle of a big city, but you're in a, really a village. You have a, a, something here in front of you that you must be very proud of that we ought to get the camera on. Why don't you hold that up for the camera, Robin? Okay. Now, what is this? That's a, uh, it's a silver basketball, and uh, I got that uh, uh, for being the most valuable player in the Big Ten in 1956. And uh, at one time, they said that the silver in it was worth $500. And believe me, that's more than I had. Well, that's a great trophy. Um, it was the first one ever given to anyone from Ohio State. Well, and uh, I, I see you have your red sweater on today, which is looks like the scarlet of, uh, of Ohio State. And I assume you've kept close ties with the university. Well, uh, uh, as much as you, as you can. Uh, uh, of course, everyone loves the football, <laughs> so uh, uh, I'm on my 61st season of uh, going to Ohio State football, and, and uh, they have a, a wonderful now basketball program. Uh, coach Matta, in my estimation, the best coach they ever had here. And there's been some good ones. Yes, yes. Uh, well, thank you so much, Robin. This has uh, been a great pleasure to have you. And, well, uh, thank you. And good luck in all you do. Well, thank you very much.